Hello, welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today, as you'll see, we're back in the kitchen and um, my wife was given a lot of plums the other day, which she's made some plum jam out of and that should be in a video up here somewhere. Um, I'm going to make wine because it's much more fun. Well, not making it, but, well, no, actually, I do enjoy making it, but the drinking is much more fun than any other part of the process. Um, basically, I've just got plums and apples and I'm just gonna make it up. And then you can see if it works at the end, whether it's a good idea to do yourself. Um, or not, it's, you know, it's me who's wasting my time and effort. Let's get on. Right, I'm going to go through all of these and get the really, really soft bits and cut them off and we won't use them, we'll discard them. This one is nearly within an inch of its life, but we can use bits of it. Um, one thing I will not be using is the stones. Now, I have um, a friend of mine who makes plum wines and various wines like that a lot and he leaves the uh, stones in. Um, because it gives it a nice almond flavour. Now that is from the hydrogen cyanide leaching out of them and as long as they're not broken, he said, as long as the stones aren't broken, he says it's perfectly safe and fine. I won't take that risk. So I am just going to be leaving the stones and the rotting bits to one side and I'm just going to fill a container and blend it all up and go from there. So I won't bore you with that. Well I will but I'll speed it up for you and um, I'll, I'll be back soon. Right, I've got lazy, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the really, really bad bits off like this. But other than that, I'm actually going to um, just blend the whole lot up. I can't be bothered. Now, um, one thing I didn't say before is I have washed all of these to get rid of as much of the natural yeasts as I can, so it's not fighting with the yeast I use. But um, I'm not too bothered, really. Again, I, I'm very laid back when it comes to making wines. Right, next I'm going to peel and core the apples. I wasn't going to peel them, but I think it'll be it'll be easier and it, we won't we shouldn't get too many contaminations if I do peel them. So that's job number 1. Next, I'm going to blend it up with some apple juice. There is no reason I've chosen an apple juice. I had orange juice as well, but I just chose apple juice because it was closer. Um, I will blend it all up and I'll be back. Right, next I've got a litre of boiling water. And I'm putting it in this saucepan just because I've got something to mix in. The kilogram of sugar. I just want the sugar to dissolve a little bit. It doesn't have to completely dissolve. Right, that'll do. Now to tip it in with the mash. Don't tip it all in. Give it a mix swirl round first before just to pick up the last like bits that haven't dissolved. Now you want to swirl it around a bit, trying to mix it all up. There you go. 
Right, and while, while it's all swirled up, we're going to use our yeast. Like always, I am using high alcohol yeast because why not? And it's supposed to be like half a packet, but I always put a whole one in. Now, I'm going to want to mix it back in again, but the idea is, is not to get the yeast to touch the sides if you can, because it will just stick to the sides. Let it mix itself in for a sec. It's touching the sides, there's nothing I can do about it. There we go. Right, as you'll be able to see, hopefully, let me zoom you in. All the yeast is now nicely mixed in. Right, I'm going to put the stopper and the airlock in now um, and then in a little while I'm going to test it with a refractometer to do a um, original gravity reading and I'll explain what I mean in a sec okay this is a refractometer and this will tell you how much sugar is in your uh, in your alcohol and you need to take a um, reading before and after you've made the alcohol and then you can take away and do a little bit of a sum and find out how alcoholic your alcohol is. A lot of people don't realise this but it's very important to keep the temperatures the same both times because it will change the reading. So I'm going to wait till the, the alcohol's gone down to room temperature before doing anything like that and then um, I'll do my reading then. Next we need to put this in a place that is going to be undisturbed and where it's going to be warm, not cold. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be like central heated warm but just so that it doesn't get too cold. It'll work better in a nice warm environment, so like if you've got a boiler room or something like that. Right, it's a couple of hours after I've um, made all this and I've just given it a bit of a shake up because all the sediment will rise all to the top and it sort of blocks the gases escaping sometimes. So I've shaken it up just to allow some of the gas to escape and we're getting the odd bubble coming through now. Okay, about 40 days have passed, and there's been about six months more hair growth. My bad. Anyway, um, the bubbling stopped, and I've lit, left it to um, drop, like all the sediment to drop out. But with something that has got this much mash in it, and I leave it in throughout the whole process until this point, um, it will just separate out, and there'll be a big s section of mash, which is like the bits of the fruit and so on, and a nice, hopefully, clear layer of wine. Um, this part I'd normally siphon out, put through funnels and filters and so on and so on, but I'm going to do it a super lazy way. It still works, I've done it a few times and it works pretty well, um, but it's very much quicker and I just can't be bothered to fight doing it today. I just want to get it out. And at the moment I have wine bottles, so I'm going to actually have to put it in another clean demijohn, um, which is a carboy to, carboy to you Americans, but um, I'm going to put it in another demijohn and just put it on a... A shelf somewhere for a bit until I can get some wine bottles. Um, one thing I wanted to say is I used the refractometer when I first made it and it was 37 bricks and I'm going, I've already checked part way through the process and I think it was about 17 bricks. I will now check it again um, once I've filtered it all and sorted it all out and we can see what percentage of alcohol we're at. Hopefully anyway. Okay so this is what it looks like now. This is obviously our layer of wine and then our layer of sediment but there is a lot of um, wine still in there so you don't just want to chuck this away. This is again about 50% of wine on top of that. Um, so we're going to filter this all. I'd normally siphon off the top layer and then I'd filter this bit but I'm just going to filter the whole lot. I can't be bothered to waste time. Right, this is my sort of microfiber filter. It's like a cheesecloth, but it's made of a like a plastic kind of stuff. I'm not sure what it's made out of, but I'm going. I've just um, heated it up in boiling water, and I'm going to wring it out, tip it out, well, tip out the water that I get out of this, and then that's all clean and beautiful. Um, I have obviously washed my hands too. Right, 
Next, I'm going to put this over the top. Try not to touch the workbench because the workbench is not clean. And now I'm going to tip the wine into this area. As I say, normally I would filter half out and so on, but I just cannot be bothered. I'm being too, too, too lazy today. Yummy. Right, now this is the sticky, horrible procedure. And literally, it's just a case of picking it up and squeezing it. If you're using um, actual cheesecloth, just hang it and let it drain on its own because if you squeeze too hard it will just all come through the cheesecloth. Um, but if you're using something like this, which is like a plastic like I said, then you can squeeze a bit harder but just be careful not to squeeze too hard because you can still squeeze some of the, the mash through. Now obviously the mesh on this one is fine, but it's still gonna let a lot of the sediment through, just not the bigger chunks. So this will now be like a normal wine, you know, as in before you put any finings or anything in. Finings, 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 that's right. I always say that wrong for some reason. Don't know why. I think I read it wrong when I first started making wine. And ever since, I'm never sure. Right, we're getting close to being finished now. Right, that'll do. There is still more in there, but I'm not going to bother with it. Right, I'm going to leave that for about 10 minutes just to let the worst of the sediment drop out. It will, You know, it's going to take lots longer than that to do, but it just helps me a tiny bit. And then I'll be on the next stage. Right, like every person on the planet predicted, it didn't drop anything out of the solution. I, you know, I'd have to leave it a few, good few hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, siphon it out into here. And then I'm going to leave it to drop out over probably overnight and then I will put the findings in tomorrow morning. Okay, it's the next day and a layer of sediment has started to form down here, but obviously it's still very, very cloudy. Um, so next I'm going to siphon this into another demijohn and then we'll add the wine findings to it. Right, next we need to stabilise the wine. I used Wilco's stabiliser. It's worked fine for me, you know. Um, I put this in and then I degas at the same time so that this gets mixed in do it how you want there's a different way of doing it on the thing but i'm always too lazy to do that this one here is sodium metabite sulfate and potassium sorbate and you're supposed to put one glass of wine out of your um demijohn and then mix it with this um i don't i'm super duper lazy today and i just chuck it in and then I'll swill the entire thing around as much as possible. So I'll do that first. Right, the next thing I need to do is degas it. And all I've done is um, got a coat hanger 
on my drill I've obviously um, cleaned it all and sterilized it and then I'm just going to put it in and stir it. That'll do donkey. Right, the next thing we're going to do is add the finings and what these do is they take the, the finings part A I believe binds to all of the particulates in the wine and then part B makes them drop out of solution. So hopefully you get a very nice clean clear wine but um, it doesn't always work. Um, that I've noticed that temperature plays a, um, a role in it. If, if it's too cold, then it doesn't work and various other things. And then I've had batches that no matter what I've done, I've done like, let's say three different Demijohns full and one lot just hasn't worked and they've all been done exactly the same. So sometimes I think it just doesn't work. Perhaps it's the, the quality of this or perhaps it's the particulates within the wine. I don't know, but this is the next stage. So these are Wilkinson's findings and uh, part A, part B. Okay, now I give it a, a mix by hand, like this, I mean, making sure it goes throughout the entire wine now. And now you let that sit for one hour. I always set an alarm because the amount of times before, without setting an alarm, I end up forgetting about it. And it's, you know, six hours later. So I'll set an alarm and come back to it. Okay, so now it's time for part B. So... This is where the magic happens. I'm not sure how either, but it does. You should already be able to see stuff dropping out of solution. But. That shouldn't do it. Right, and this is where we are 24 hours later. As you can see, a lot more of the sediments dropped out and we've dramatically changed colour from red to orange, but there's still a lot more sediment to drop out. Okay, so there's at least a few more days worth of um, time needing to pass now for the rest of the sediment to drop out and it should go crystal clear. Uh, if it doesn't, there are a few things you can do. You can add findings again. Uh, the more times you add it, the more flavors you get from it and it can it can spoil the wine that way um, but there are things you can do but as far as you know I'm concerned normally I've only ever had it happen a couple of times where sediment just hasn't dropped out at all but um, yeah as I say just a few more days and that should drop out but I'm going to leave it there because all it all it would be is it would clear itself up and you know I've shown that multiple times and then um, it, it'd be a case of bottling it up uh, again, something I've done multiple times on the channel. Uh, if you want to have a look at that, I will leave a little card up there. Um, and I believe I've got that right this time. I believe it's this side. I tried to remember the other day, but now I want to say it's this side. Who cares? Right. Okay, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you again soon. Bye for now.